All right, welcome to the most important talk of the year, probably. It's going to be kinematic equations. All right, this is going to be a set of about um, <clears throat> five equations, and we got to figure out how to use them correctly. All right, so we're off. So why would we even want to use it? So if we have a rolling a bowling ball and we roll it down the, a ramp, right, it's going to start off going to go in slow and get faster, 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 faster. So how do we solve this? How do we figure out what's going on on this line? If I, let's say I want to know what's going on in four seconds. How do I figure that out? I may know uh, what's going on at one second in the beginning, so how do I find out the rest? That's our goal. Okay, here are our four kinematic equations. One, two, three, four. All right, these are the ones we're going to rely on. If the velocity is changing, we want to use these. What we're looking at here, all right, we see the variables. We have VF. We know that one. That's the final velocity. Here's our initial velocity. Here is our acceleration. Delta T is the time, right? That's, that's the final time minus the initial time. Uh, and usually you're just going to set the initial time to be zero, so delta T could often be just called T. Right, uh, and let's see. In this one, we are missing a delta x, and remember, delta x is always delta x is always uh, the final x minus the initial x. So we could put that in there. Now, there's something interesting here. All right. Uh, oh, we had to make one important thing is that um, those equations are only uh, are going to be useful when velocity is changing. Okay, if velocity is changing, we want to use those equations. If it's not changing, we want to use this one. Okay, it's just simpler, right? If velocity is just a number, we can use this one. But it's super, 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 super important that we cannot use that if it is, if velocity is changing, we can't use that at all. Okay, if it's changing, we've got to go with the equations that we just looked at, those, those bad boys there, right? If it is not changing, we can go ahead and use that. So that's super important. Don't try to use that one, okay, unless you're sure it's okay. All right? All right, so here we go. So we've got these four equations here, all right, and how do we recognize them? We have, if we look at it, the letters we've got, we've got five different letters that we worry about flying around in here. So that means each one of these guys, right, has, if you look, has four, five, four letters in it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. T's already counted. One, two, three, four. So how many things do you need to know in a four-letter equation? You need to know three things, and then you can find the fourth thing. That also means for each one of these has four things in it, which means that every equation is missing one of these. One of these is missing from every equation. So if we look at it, right, this has got... Uh, VF, right, VI, uh, acceleration in time. So what is missing? We're missing the delta X. There's no delta X there. Okay, this guy, X, V, V, T, there's no acceleration in this one. So there's no acceleration. This one, look at this, there is no final velocity, right? We know all the ones except final velocity, and this one here is missing time itself, okay? And so it's going to be important for us to recognize these four guys based on the things that are missing. Okay, you are going to use whichever one of these is appropriate based on the variable that you actually don't care about. So you're going to get good at recognizing uh, what variable you don't care about, and then you can find the equation that's going to fit your problem. All right, so here's an example. All right, we have a ski jumper. They're skiing down a ramp with acceleration of 3.6 meters per second squared, starting from rest, how far she traveled in three seconds. Okay, here's all our equations up there. So I want you to always... First, draw a picture. You want to label the plus and the minus sides. Boom. There's the ski, drive, ski jumper. All right. And then I want you to write down these five variables. Okay. Every single freaking time. Okay. Write those puppies down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the ones we know. So if we look at this, 3.6 meters per second squared, that is an acceleration. So I'm going to put down 3.6 here. All righty. I've got from rest. That is a secret code word, right? From rest. That means that uh, you started at zero velocity. That's going to come up a lot. Uh, if you're stopped, if you end in a stop, the velocity final is zero. If you're starting from rest, the velocity initial is zero, so on. How far is you travel in three seconds? All right, so I'm going to put three seconds down for that. All right, and then I want to know how far has she traveled. Well, that is this guy right here. I want to know this. I want to know how long, how far she's traveled, okay? So I am then going to not care 
about the V final because it's not part of the problem. So I see that V final is what I don't have. I'm going to go up and I'm going to find the guy here that does not have a V final. Okay, and I see this one doesn't have a V final. So this is the one I'm going to use because it does not have the variable that I don't care about. And that's a double negative, but there it is. So you see I'm going to use that. Okay, I'm going to fill in all my numbers now, right? The velocity initial is 0. The change in time is 3. Acceleration is 3.6. The change in time is 3 again. So if I do the math out like this, it's beautiful because the initial value is 0. This whole thing drops off. That's nice. And we're just left with this. And we can find that 16.2 meters. All right? So the skier goes downhill by 16.2 meters. Okay. So let's just practice setting, setting things up. We got our problem. First thing we do is draw a picture. We want to label the plus or the minuses. And then I want you to write down the, the stinking five variables. All right? And now we're going to try and fill them up. Okay, acceleration after five seconds. So that would be five seconds. I see that number. In fact, I actually recommend you circle things. That is going to be the time. All right, here, that is going to be my delta x. All right, from rest, right? What's that going to be? That's my vi right? And then I want to know what is its acceleration. So I want to know the acceleration. I might put a question mark there. Uh, I know this is 1200. I know vi is zero. We just said that. And do I care how fast it's going? I do not. I do not care how fast it's going, right? So I'm going to look over here for the thing that does not care how fast you're going, and that is going to be at the end, and that is going to be this guy here. There's no v final there, right? So that's the one I'm going to use for this problem. Now that I have that, I'm just going to plug those numbers in and I'm good to go. All right. So how do we do this in general? These are directions. Just like I said, make a picture, label plus and minus. Now if the velocity is constant, you can get away and use this. It's each easier than all the other equations. But if it's not constant, we've got to use the, the five variables. List them and fill in any numbers that you know. Okay. You can find things that you know by the units. Right? They're like name tags. Meters per second is a velocity. Meters per second squared is acceleration. You know, seconds is time, whatever. Look out for code words like stopping or at rest or things like that. That usually means some velocity somewhere is zero. Okay? Make sure you use the right signs based on the picture you drew. Okay? Whether it's a plus or minus velocity, plus or minus acceleration, all that sort of thing. What I have you do is once you've listed those guys, circle the variable you're looking for, cross out the variable you're going to ignore. Okay, and then find the equation that also ignores your ignored variable. In other words, look for the equation that is missing the variable you are ignoring. Okay, or alternatively, find the equation that has all the letters you do care about. You know, I find it quicker to find the one that's missing the one I want. All right, and then you just plug in numbers. You can rearrange it, whatever it is. So here's another a dragster running the race. So I've got this. Draw my picks to the dragster plus or minus. I list my five variables. Okay, now I'm looking at 90 meters per second is going when deploys his parachute. So that is actually my initial, 90, okay? Uh, and then the acceleration is minus 4, so it's going minus 4. I want that minus 4. That means he's slowing down. Acceleration is that way. He's slowing down. That's the acceleration. I want to know the delta x, okay? And let's see. I don't actually care about the time. Look at that. I don't care about it, right? What I want to know is, um, oh, before stopping. I knew I was missing something. Before stopping, that's my secret code for final to be zero. And I'm going to look on here now for something that is missing the time, because I don't care about time. And that is actually this guy right here. I write this down. I fill in all the blanks. Be careful, the velocities are squared. And there's no time there. And I will find my, I'll be able to find my displacement. This is the delta x right there, delta x. I will find my delta x through there and give me the answer. All right, hopefully that helps.